the 1982 Chrysler LeBaron was an important car for the Chrysler Corporation. This would be the first time the LeBaron was offered as a front-wheel drive car and the first domestic convertible offering since the 1976 Cadillac Eldorado. Featuring a transverse-mounted engine and sitting on the newly developed K-Car platform, with the LeBaron was essentially a K-Car, the design language favored more of the E-body cars, especially the Chrysler E-Class. Our car was built in May of 1982 at the St. Louis Assembly Plant in St. Louis, Missouri, with production run of the LeBaron Convertible in 1982 was 12,825, with 9,780 of those being the Mark Cross trim level. And no, John Voigt did not own this car. Despite the fact that this car is a Mark Cross trim, what that really meant is that it basically started life as a medallion trim car with upgraded leather seats. The leather, aside from the two-tone appearance, wasn't really representative of genuine Mark Cross products, of which were, and still are, high-end luxury products. This is basically a more newer version of the rich Corinthian leather, as made famous by Ricardo Montalban, famous for his roles in both Planet of the Apes and Star Trek. As was Corinthian leather, Mark Cross leather in the LeBaron was nothing more than a marketing strategy that portrayed a more up-level premium product, when in fact it was the same leather used in all Chrysler products. Hello everyone. In today's full in-depth review, we are proud to present this absolutely stunning and immaculate 1982 Chrysler LeBaron. This LeBaron is actually the Mark Cross trim. It is a convertible painted in snow white and it features the very distinctive Mark Cross exclusive dark brown and light brown, I call mocha and caramel leather interior. I've not been able to find a whole lot about pricing, but these started somewhere around $12,780 and they can go all the way up to about $14,000, $15,000 however you equipped. This car is actually very nicely equipped. And if I do find pricing information, I will put that up on the screen, of course. Overall, this car is actually in just very, very nice and very well kept shape. The interior is hold up, held up well over the test of time. As stated previously, the LeBaron is front wheel drive with power coming from an iron block and aluminum head. Mitsubishi built 2.6 liter single overhead cam, eight valve inline four cylinder engine. This engine is the Astron Series 4G54 MEC jet engine equipped with the Makuni Solex 32 two barrel carburetor and sporting an 8.2 to one compression ratio. This engine creates 92 horsepower at 4,500 RPM and 131 pound-feet of torque at 2,500 RPM. Even though Chrysler publication stated a performer in every sense of the word, that word leaves a lot to be desired. Zero to 60 miles per hour comes in a slow 14.9 seconds with a quarter mile and 20.1 seconds at 70 miles per hour. Its top speed is around 80 miles per hour. All LeBarons are equipped with a 13 U.S. gallon fuel capacity and consume 5 gallons per 100 miles driven with an estimated total driving range of around 260 miles. Current EPA fuel economy figures are 18 miles per gallon city, 22 miles per gallon highway with 20 miles per gallon combined. While a manual transmission was standard, our car is equipped with a Torque Flight 3-speed A470 automatic transmission. Alrighty, around the rear of the LeBaron, normally it would be a very nice, elegant design, but we have this 
rear tire carrier is absolutely not stock as you can see it actually has a cadillac wreath and crest logo there not a great look actually but the rest of the rear end does look good you do have a luggage rack here on the trunk lid of course you have the chrysler and lebaron badges nice little uh chrome lined tail lamps it's all red you have a shiny chrome piece here and then these chrome painted bars here backup lamps have actually been transferred to this uh, bumper element here which otherwise mars a very nice looking rear end styling especially for a car of this uh, era lebaron script here One thing you can see here, it does have a matching tonneau cover. It has actually shrunk over time, so I could not get all of the snaps to fasten, but you kind of get the idea of how it was supposed to attach. This went all the way around that chrome strip, and it is actually fastened in place. It hides in the top well when the top is up, so you don't lose it. It doesn't fly away. All right, as we walk along the profile in convertible form, as you can see, looks very, very nice. For a front wheel drive car, it does have short wheelbase and overall length. It's not a very big car at all. All right, let's go ahead and put that top up now. All right, now that we have the top up, as you can see here, it's actually a very nice and tight fitting top. Motor Week in 1982 said it was a little bit too much top, and this is what they meant. There's actually no side window to speak of here. You've only got the front glass. So in the back, it gets kind of dark. And of course, we only have a plastic window, but it is a fully electric top. You only have to release or un unlatch the release catches. As you can see, it's a pretty nice form fitting top. It seals quite nicely. Steering is hydraulically assisted rack and pinion with 3.9 turns lock to lock and a 34.6 foot turning radius. Wheels on our car are a 14 by 5.5 inch black painted steel wheels with deluxe argent wire spoke covers. Tires are 185-70 R14 Continental Touring LX All Seasons. And the LeBaron is equipped with power assisted front disc and rear drum brakes. There is no assist feature for the braking system. Take a look at the front of the LeBaron. It's actually a very nice looking car, especially for the 1980s. Chrysler did an actually excellent job of styling the vehicle. It looks very modern. One thing I really like is this chrome windshield trim. You've got these nice aerodynamic mirrors. They flow right out of the body into the side wings. We do have some pinstriping down here, chrome accents along the wheel houses. You've also got cornering lamps here, side marker lamps there, quad sealed beam headlamps. Another nice feature is how the chrome on the grill actually goes up into the hood itself. You've got Chrysler's uh, crystal Penta Pentastar, open ribs in the uh, grill that actually flow down. To the lower portion overall i'd say this is actually a very handsome car all righty i know we just put the top up now it's down again for you eagle-eyed viewers anyway we're going to take a look inside now of course we don't have keyless entry or anything like that we just have a two 
key system, ignition, and of course your locks and your trunk, that sort of thing. Car's already unlocked, so we're just gonna head, open the door. And believe it or not, it's actually a very nice solid opening door. Not quite bank vault, but it still feels very high in quality. And taking a look at the interior, as you can see, even for being 40 years old, this car has held up well over the test of time. And of course the elements being a convertible. Taking a look at the door panels, they're in this more dark brown, has a violet undertone to it. Nice soft padded vinyl trim on the upper portions, even down here. This is all carpeting here. Of course you have illumination, a padded armrest, tufted uh, the caramel colored leather here. And of course you have the Mark Cross badge here. And you have these leather door poles. There's a lot of wood here harvested from the plastic forest. And they did try to make it look upscale by adding two different types. So you have this oak look and you have this walnut inlay style. You have your door poles here. They're a polished chrome, mirror controls, lock controls, stainless steel here looks really really nice and you have your window controls so you have your right window and your driver's window and your door locks headlamp control and instrument panel dim control that's all housed or surrounded in this uh, walnut trim and then you have this oak trim here and look they even tried to make it look like inlay which actually is okay padded dash on top hard plastic down here Parking brake release with your parking brake hood release. And of course, there is no manual transmission in this car. But check out that cut pile carpeting. It is a thick, thick brown shag style carpet. Aftermarket, um, aftermarket foot mats though. Inside here, you do have the quality engineered by Chrysler Corporation tread plate. And of course, the seat backs do recline. And taking a look at the seats. Believe it or not, the seats are actually very comfortable. They actually look like they would be. High adjustable head restraints, two-tone leather. Here on the armrest, you can see faintly the Mark Cross insignia. The seats just offer really nice, comfortable support. Nothing really extreme. This is the only sign of wear on the seats right here, is this, is this tear here. Everything on the side is padded vinyl. And you have the stainless steel here on the uh, seat protector. But anyway. All right, now we're inside. We're going to pan through the interior and show more details. Hydraulically assisted power steering on a two-spoke leather wrapped steering wheel. All the way around here. These buttons right here will be the horn button, but that's not operational right now. Of course, you have the uh, Chrysler badge here in the middle and a soft padded area here. This is all hard plastic though, but overall the steering wheel actually looks pretty nice. Over here, we do have a multifunction controller. So we have our wiper washer controllers. We have our cruise control. So we have off, on, resume. And of course, this button here is your set button. And then of course, we've also got our turn indicators and our high beam control. This little bullet style shape lever here is your tilt wheel. Over here we just have a traditional key. We have a key release. Normally that's found in manual transmissions, but this car has it too. And our hazard flashers are over here. And taking a look at the instrument panel, not much to see here. You have four warning lights over here. You have your check engine light, brake warning light, battery, turn indicator. In the middle here, we have an 85 mile per hour speedometer, and then it's reading 97,855 miles. In the center, we have a high beam light, but nothing else as far as warning lights are concerned. And here it says front wheel drive. This was actually the first front wheel drive Chrysler. Uh, so that was pretty big for them. And of course, we just have a sole fuel gauge. And over to the far right, we have a turn indicator and our fasten belts indicator lamp. Moving over to the top of the dash, as I stated before, it is a nice padded unit. It's a vinyl with faux stitching, and it is in really, really good shape. It is starting to curl a little bit, but a lot of grace can be given due to the car's age. As you can see, we have air vents here. 
they have the satin silver trim and over here we have our AM FM cassette player radio quartz slot precision series whatever that means it is a digital readout all of these controls are backlit green down here we have our temperature control so max AC AC we have our vent and our heat it is very very cold today it's 21 degrees out right now and of course we have our defroster this is your temperature controller here and this is your fan speed control and all of these are backlit green here is our chronometer clock you can set our hours and minutes that was an option and moving over here what looks to be like an airbag cover is not it is just a decorative trim panel and you have the LeBaron in the center here we do have a fold down ashtray And over here we have a glove box. Inside the glove box is our rear trunk release. Alrighty, moving down the center, not much to see here. Automatic transmission, power top, top controller, and this nice little wood trim area. And this padded armrest that we saw before with the Mark Cross. This does not actually open, there's no storage in this. Overall, I just absolutely love the interior of this car. It is absolutely gorgeous. I think it still looks good to this day, even though it's a 1982 model. Overhead, we have a manually dimming rear view mirror. And we have sun visors. They swing out. There's no mirror or vanity light or anything like that. All right, now that we got out of the car, let's get back in. I want to show you the rear seats now. And yes, it does have rear seats and it is starting to snow too. So that's fantastic. Anyway, seat back just folds forward. Folds forward actually really, really high. So you do have a really nice step in height. And despite that huge tunnel there, it is front wheel drive. And Chrysler was generous enough to put a rear bench seat back here. It only seats two barely. But as you can see, it's the same leather. You do have a lot of carpeting back here for padding. And true to the 80s, you just have lap belts back here. No speakers or anything like that. You do have three-point belts for the front seats though. All right, and to open the trunk, there's two ways. You can use the trunk key, or you can open the glove box as stated before. Here's a little panel here that says open rear. There's actually a button underneath that. Pressing that will actually unlatch the trunk. And on your module, your trunk light will light up. Just above the radio, there's a warning light module there. It says trunk, and then there's another one for door. That's your door jar. All right, and as you can see, the trunk does open up pretty wide. It does have a high lift over height, however. Of course, you have your wheel cover removal instructions and your jacking instructions. They're kind of faded now. But as you can see in here, 
for a convertible it is a massive trunk it's a very deep it's fully carpeted in this really nice high quality black carpet the deep well here usually would be reserved for the spare tire as you can see back here you do have your jack and there is a spare tire thing right there but overall like this trunk for a convertible of this size very very impressive amount of storage space and to close the trunk just close it all righty and that does conclude our in-depth walk around review of the 1982 chrysler lebaron mark cross edition we hope you found the review informative and if you did please comment down below also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews and our Instagram channel at brinsoj1. Of course, as always, thanks for watching.